Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's word for our meditation this evening from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 38. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So far the words of our text. You now it seems that temptation has been easier to laugh at than it is to resist. People have been making jokes about temptation for a, a long time. Some of you might remember back to the 80s and, and the church lady from from Saturday Night Live. If you remember that, you'll remember how quick she was to blame all bad behavior that happened on Satan. Or maybe others of you remember Foot Wilson, who joked about temptation using that line, the devil made me do it. Of course, comedies for years have, have made jokes with the little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other shoulder, kind of having a back and forth where, where one is trying to get the person to do whatever is in front of them and, and, and the other is trying to keep them from it. People have found it very easy to, to joke about temptation, but temptation really isn't the laughing matter. The words of Jesus in our text when he said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak remind us just how difficult temptation can be to overcome. That was evident right from the first, uh, right from the very beginning with our first parents, Adam and Eve, who were, fell to that first temptation the devil laid before them when they traded in their perfection for a bite of the forbidden fruit. See, giving in to temptation has serious, deadly consequences. It is literally a matter of life and death. And all the while we live in this body, we, we live in Satan's turf. There will be temptations all around us in this world. And all the while we live in this body, we have a sinful nature in us. There's temptation that comes from within. All the way up until the time our Lord Jesus comes back to judge the living and the dead, the devil will be doing his best to tempt us. He wants nothing more than to try and separate us from God and lead us to wander away from the path that God has set up for us through Jesus to eternal life. And so what do we do? What do we do when we're constantly confronted with temptation from without and temptation from within? A Lenten series offers to us the one solution. Turn to Jesus when you face temptation. Now, why turn to Jesus when we face temptation? Because he knows all about temptation. The devil was right there with Jesus as he began his ministry, right after his baptism, as the devil was tempting him in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. In the text before us, we see the devil was still right there with Jesus, tempting him to, to veer off the path the Father had put him on to save the world on that final night of his ministry in Gethsemane's garden. What Jesus experienced that night was real, raw fear. He, he knew exactly what was coming. He feared his followers, and more importantly, his heavenly Father rejecting him and, and abandoning him the next day. He was tempted with the, the terror as he thought about the next day's torture. He was tempted with horror at the thought of suffering hell itself. He was tempted with dread as he thought about his upcoming death. He was tempted with that 
gut-wrenching disgust at having to drink the cup the Father was asking him to drink on behalf of his people. I think from a human standpoint, we can understand why Jesus was so earnestly praying and asking his Father to take this cup from him. What horrible contents filled that cup. That cup was full of God's wrath against all sin for all time. The rebellion of Adam, the drunkenness of Noah, the lies of Abraham, the deceit of Jacob, the adultery of David, the greed of Matthew, the denial of Peter, the betrayal by Judas, the murder of, by Paul. That, all of that was in that cup. But your sin was there too. So was mine. All that sin from your past that you hope stays in the deepest secret so no one else ever knows that those sins were in that cup. Those, those thoughts in your mind that would even cause Satan to blush if they were beamed up onto the wall in front of us for everyone to see today. Those were in that cup. Those words that you spoke in anger to hurt someone else were in that cup. All those selfish things that you did that made others miserable, they were in that cup. Just think about the things you've done today or thought or said that were in that cup. And don't forget to add the things that you might do tomorrow or the day after or the day after that. They were all there in that cup. And the one who had no sin had to drink that cup and make that sin his own. The sinless Son of God, who was nothing but pure holiness, had to drink that cup of God's wrath on behalf of his people. As a man, he shuddered in terror at the thought. As God, he completely revolted at the thought of sin. And yet as he prayed, Lord, God, Dad, take this away if possible. He never once veered from the Father's will. Not my will, but yours be done. As he faced temptation, he turned to his Father in prayer. And temptation was trounced. God answered his prayer, sent the Holy Spirit to, to strengthen him in that hour so that he could get up and leave that garden tonight, that night, in the hands of those Jewish leaders and carry his cross all the way to the place of the skull where God condemned sin because of the sacrifice that he made. His perfect obedience to the Heavenly Father along with his sacrificial death, paid the price that God demanded for your sins and mine. And because of that, God brings to us healing and forgiveness and, and mercy. But how different it was, just the stones throw away. That's where, where Jesus had left Peter, James, and John. You, you'll remember those were three of the disciples who very boldly confessed their undying allegiance to Jesus regardless of what happened. Remember when James and John wanted to reign with Jesus and his kingdom, one on his right and one on his left, and they, they confessed very confidently they certainly could drink the cup Jesus was going to drink. And, and then, of course, there was, was Peter, who said he would rather die than deny his Savior. These men who wanted to reign with him and were willing to die for him couldn't even keep their eyes open with him for one hour to watch and pray. Here they thought that they could rely on their own strength rather than seeking God's strength. And so they fell asleep. Instead of being that comfort that Jesus needed in his humanity, they allowed sleep to overtake them and give testimony to how weak the flesh truly is. And of course, we know how well that went for them as they all abandoned Jesus in the garden that night. And, and we know about Peter's denial. But you know, let's not be too hard on these guys, lest we indict ourselves. Watch and pray, that's, 
That's what Jesus says to you and me too. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. We know how important it is to, to keep our eyes open in this world. How many accidents happen because someone took their eyes off the road just for a few seconds to check their phone and how many batters strike out because just for a split second they took their eye off of the ball and, and missed it as it came through. If it's important to keep our eyes open in this world, how much more so the eyes of our heart as we walk, keep watch for the temptations of Satan? What temptations do we watch out for? Procrastination in our worship life. Dull listening to God's word. Laziness in our holy living. Apathy in our prayer life. The desires and lusts of our heart. Allowing our spiritual eyes to droop and our spiritual vision to, blare and our, to blur and our souls to sleep. Because when sin comes, we remember death is right there with it. Right? Where there's sin, there are the wages of sin, which is death, judgment, and wrath. That's how dangerous, that's how serious temptation is. So how thankful for us to see Jesus keep his focus. Turn to his Father in prayer as he faced temptation with the, the help granted to him by the Holy Spirit. Stand strong and stand firm. So that he can offer the perfect sacrifice that covers all of our sins and assure us that right now, as you and I stand before our Heavenly Father in faith, we stand forgiven and certain of eternal life. And friends, when you do fall into temptation, when you give in to the temptations in front of you and sin, rest your soul in the wounds of Jesus for your healing and forgiveness. That's the good news. That not only brings us joy and strength, but renews us to watch and pray as we continue in our lives. Our flesh may be weak, but through the Holy Spirit, our spirit is willing. And so when temptation comes, turn to the Lord in prayer. Trust that He has the power to do every, all things possible and that His will always will be done. When you face the, the, the weakness of your flesh as temptation comes your way, turn to the one who already was victorious over that. And who alone can give you the strength that you need to stand firm. You know, Luther once said that you can't stop the birds from flying over your head. But you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. You can't stop Satan from throwing his temptations before you. But you can tell those birds to go fly somewhere else. God gives you the strength. God helps you to stand firm. God helps you to live as his people. When faced with temptation, turn to Jesus and know that he will help. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well,